I think uh, 2017 March we exited from CDR. Uh, when we exited from CDR, the portfolio was very small. It was just uh, 1300 crore. Our net worth was just 540 crore. From there onwards, we were uh, building the book. Uh, so two key lessons that we have learned from AP crisis. One is geographical diversification. Prior to CDR, like we were uh, very much focused in terms of one state that was Andhra Pradesh. We had almost a 51% portfolio in Andhra Pradesh. That was about 2300 crore. And post exiting from CDR, like one key decision that we have taken is like we need to diversify ourselves. Uh, so today we are present across 17 states and we have uh, clearly diversified the portfolio not only across states but across districts. Mm. No district has more than 2% of the total portfolio. In fact, uh, only 15 districts they have more than 1% of the portfolio. All other districts like they have less than 1% of the portfolio. If you look at the industry pairs, like on an average they have 45 crore portfolio. But in our case, like no district has more than 15 crore portfolio. Mm. And even the portfolio has been extremely well diversified across branches. Today, no branch has more than 0.3% of the portfolio. This is one key lesson that we have learned and we have implemented. The second important lesson that we have learned after AP crisis, uh, during AP uh, crisis time, the balance sheet was highly leveraged. Our net worth was just 700 crore and our total portfolio was 4,500 crore, which means like the balance sheet was seven times leveraged. Uh, so as such, it took some time for us to really come out of that crisis and again rebuild the business. Mm. Today, if we see the capital adequacy is 40%, post this issue, it will further increase to 45%. Uh, so in the last two years, like we have been infusing capital and the company was adequately capitalized. And this is something like we will continue to do. And we have taken a decision that like we will not leverage more than four times. While the capital adequacy requirement given by RBA is just 15%, but we have decided to maintain 25% capital adequacy at any given point in time. So ma'am, uh, with respect to uh, the sector that uh, the company is operating in now, microfinance, it has been through its uh, its period of stress. Now things seem to be stabilizing a little bit. But uh, you know, just a couple, few years ago, a large number of the bigger microfinance players sort of exited uh, the system. They graduated to become small finance banks. Um, in terms of the availability of loans to your borrowers, uh, and the and the constraint of, of you know sub people who are supplying that financing, uh, how does that uh, does that bode well for you to, to be able to grow your book faster because now you don't have uh, competition from some of these larger players. In fact, that has worked out very well. Uh, so almost like all the large players, they have become small finance banks. If you see like what has happened after becoming small finance banks, their focus got shifted. Uh, so they're no more growing their microfinance book. And uh, if you see the growth of small finance banks, they were able to grow their microfinance uh, book only by 20%, versus NBFC, MFI is growing by 40% which means like they're slowly vacating this particular market. For a small finance bank to be able to uh, meet their cost, if they focus only on microfinance, they will not be able to break even, they will not be able to make their profits. Because once you become the bank, your cost structure will shoot up. In microfinance, what happens if you see the branch rent, for example, so like we will not have our branches in a market area. We take residential branches. We pay like 8,000 rupees rent or 10,000 rupees rent per month. But like if you look at the small finance banks, so they have moved to like market areas. Mm. They're paying like 80,000 or two lakh rent, mm. like, like a commercial bank branch. So when they have moved to that kind of cost structure, unless like they increase their loan size, mm. they will not be able to meet their operating cost. As such today, they are forced to diversify their loan products. They are forced to diversify their clientele. Mm. So as such, they are looking at SME. They are looking at two-wheeler loans. They are looking at commercial vehicle loans. They are looking at four-wheeler loans. They are looking at wholesale lending. Mm. So they are not able to focus on microfinance. Mm. I don't think that like any small finance bank had a vision in terms of getting into all these things. Mm. But again, since they got into small finance bank, mm. they are forced to diversify their portfolio across segments and across products. So I don't have any plan because I'm very clear. Next three, four years, I want to really uh, increase my portfolio. Mm -hmm. All my branches are suboptimal. These branches can just grow. Today, on an average, each branch has only five crore portfolio. Mm -hmm. All these branches can grow to 10 crore portfolio. Right. Uh, so as I'm very clear in terms of doing only microfinance, NBFC, MFI is the better format. 
we will remain as NBFC MFA. As I said, like all the large players having uh, become small finance banks, they have vacated market. And again, Bandhan, of course, like they have become universal bank, mm. and uh, they have they continue to have focus on microfinance. Right. But again, we still see some sort of diversification. Today, like in India, which is eight times bigger than Bangladesh, unfortunately, we have only one microfinance uh, bank that has more than 20,000 crore portfolio. Right. Right. So there is a huge demand in this market for several microfinance organizations to grow further.